It's Adam here for PC Monitors and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ASUS PG27UQ. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons which are found at the rear of the monitor along the right side as viewed from the front. There's a joystick at the top, jog button, and various other buttons beneath that. The button labels on the front there's also a power LED and that faces downwards and it glows a gentle white when the monitor's on under its normal operation and normal operation on this monitor means when G-Sync's disabled of course for most users G-Sync being enabled will be the normal operation so when you enable G-Sync whether it's actively being used or not doesn't matter it's actually in the G-Sync mode now it's enabled in the NVIDIA control panel. Now that light goes red to signify that G-Sync's active and ready to be used. When the monitor is on standby that goes amber instead. If you move the joystick in any direction or press it in it opens the main menu system. Second function down is exit. The third is game plus and this has various on-screen little things like a crosshair so you can have one of various crosshair designs which go into the centre of the screen there. You can also use the joystick to move the position of the crosshair on the screen if you wish. There's an on-screen timer function which will display a timer in minutes. The top left of the screen there. There's an FPS counter which works when the monitor's in G-Sync mode and you can have it either set to just show you a readout of the frame rate and that's just the refresh rate of the, the monitor at the moment. Alternatively you can have it displayed as a graph and this is shown in action in the responsiveness section of the review and that's the video review I'm talking about there. Next up there's game visual, various different presets. These just change various options which you can configure manually yourself and they also lock out um, various options so they just give you less flexibility. I'd recommend just sticking with the standard racing mode. The others are pretty much useless, they just mess things up and change settings to various predefined values and don't achieve anything you couldn't do with manual adjustments anyway. And there is also a power button which I'm not going to press but that does what you'd expect. It turns the monitor off. I also I forgot to mention the display alignment feature, I do apologise, and that's just to help you set up multiple monitors, so to, to help sort of line them up with one another. So the main menu, it has various different sections, it also has a little information section at the top which shows you the refresh rate being used, that's the static refresh rate that you've got it set to, that doesn't change along with frame rate if you've got G-Sync active. It also tells you if G-Sync is active or whether it's in its normal mode as I was talking about before, its HDR status, also which presets being used, and the status of various other things like the Aura Sync feature which I'll get onto shortly, plus a shortened version of the model number, ROG Swift PG27U, there should be a Q at the end for the full designation. So first up there's overclocking and this just enables the 144Hz refresh rate which you can then select in Windows. The blue light filter setting can set to four different levels, this is explored in the review. And this can be useful in the, uh, in, in the evening if you want to reduce blue light output from the monitor, for example. There's brightness, there's reference white nits, and that's greyed out unless you're under HDR, which I'll show you shortly. Contrast, colour temperature, you can set that to various different values. Normal, which is just the factory default, and that has all of the colour channels at 100. Or you can alternatively set these yourself in the user mode. Well, there's cool, which, as you'd expect, gives a cool tint to the image. Well, there's warm, which is a fairly effective low blue light setting, which gives a warm look to the image and reduces the power of the blue color, and reduces the power of the blue color channel. Various gamma settings, again explored in the review. Image. This has OD overdrive. You can set that to various different values. Again, explored in the review. I should probably just stop saying things are explored in the review, of course they are. 
dark boost. And this, I'll open the Legon website because it gives a uh, good demonstration of what this does. It's just a bit like BenQ's black equaliser. So, by default, that's how things look. Things look as they should. If you increase this to level 1, it increases the visibility of the darker shades. Level 2 increases the visibility further. Level 3 lightens them further. It doesn't just affect the dark shades, it also affects various other shades. Um, some lighter shades as well, especially at the higher levels, but it's fairly good at targeting just darker shades and it doesn't affect the black point. And the, the idea here is that it gives you a competitive advantage in the game so it's easier to see your enemies in dark surroundings. Next there's variable backlight and this can be enabled under SDR to enable the 384 dimming zones of the backlight. You can set this to various different speeds of operation which will affect how quickly it transitions between sort of dark and light really. Um, fast, I found no issues using fast, so I just use fast. This is explored in the review, um, and it's shown in the video review as well. Auto black level, this is just applicable to HDMI, and it will automatically select a full or limited range signal, or alter the black level depending on the signal type. So this isn't relevant to the display port as I'm using now. Aspect ratio. This is again not relevant to DisplayPort and that's because the monitor only offers interpolation or scaling when it's connected via HDMI and that's usual for G-Sync monitors. If you're using it via HDMI and you're using a non-native resolution you can change how it controls the scaling of the image. So there's a one-to-one -one pixel mapping feature which will display things with a black border around and only use the pixels called for in the source resolution. Aspect, which will maintain whatever aspect ratio there is from the source resolution and may use a degree of interpolation with the other uh, either horizontally or vertically depending on the aspect ratio you've selected. And there is full which will just stretch everything across and use all of the pixels regardless of the resolution you select. There's input select and this allows you to change the input used by the monitor or have it automatically switch for you. And if you've got multiple devices connected, for example a PC by DisplayPort and a console by HDMI and you're finding it keeps on biasing towards one of the systems and you don't want it to, make sure you turn the auto switch feature off. System setup, and this has a lot of interesting settings in it. So there's language, um, oops, there's a language which changes the language that the OSD is displayed in. Light and motion, which is a feature I'm going to show you shortly. ROG light signal, which is a feature I'm going to show you shortly, Aura Sync, another feature which I'm going to show you very shortly, Aura RGB, um, again, which I'll show you shortly. You can change the OSD position, you can change the level of transparency, increase the transparency effect so you can't actually read the menu if it's full, which isn't very useful. Change the idle timeout period, so how long after the last button press before the menu automatically disappears and that's measured in seconds. Key lock if you want to stop annoying family members from using your monitor without your permission unless they know how to unlock it and they're very clever. Information displays various different uh, things such as the resolution, the colour depth currently being used, the pixel format etc. Sound and that changes the volume of anything connected to the 3.5mm jack or you can mute that if you prefer. There's DisplayPort and HDMI Deep Sleep. These are energy saving features, so they're on by default. If you're finding that you send your computer to sleep and the monitor's not waking up properly, then turn that off. Eco Mode, uh, that doesn't actually seem to do anything on this monitor. Really, it's uh, sort of supposed to be a sort of weak dynamic contrast setting, but it doesn't seem to do anything that I could tell on this monitor. But for consistency purposes, just in case it did and I wasn't realizing, I've turned it off. Auto SDR brightness. This is quite a good feature, actually. There's a little light sensor built into the monitor. You can see it at the top there, top central region. And this allows the monitor to adjust its brightness, the backlight brightness, depending on the brightness of your room, the ambient lighting. And you do get a bit of flexibility, which is why I say this is quite a good feature. So you can actually sort of 
change the brightness, um, the maximum brightness that it'll use. I do find that in some lights, e even with it set to 100, I find it a bit dim sometimes, so I would have actually preferred a bit more flexibility um, and perhaps to set the, the ranges or um, sort of have a bit more control over it. But if you're one of those people who just likes your monitor dimming when it gets darker in the room or, or, or what have you, um, then yeah, this is quite a good implementation of that kind of feature. Next there is display SDR input and that changes the colour gamut of the monitor so you can set it to an sRGB emulation mode or you can set it to wide gamut which uses the full gamut of the monitor and again that's relevant to SDR, standard dynamic range. Warning message HDR, that just tells you that you shouldn't um, sort of mess around with the settings too much because HDR is sort of gives a very specific signal and controls the luminance in a very specific way and that could upset it. So that's a little bit annoying actually, I probably should have turned that off before. There's DP and HDMI, SDR, YCBCR, sRGB, Gamma. Sounds like a right confusing setting and it's a right mouthful. But what that does is it just corrects the gamma if you're using a YCBCR colour signal, which you do if you're running this monitor at 144Hz for example. So just set that to on. Um, I think it's on by default for DisplayPort and off for HDMI for some reason, but certainly for DisplayPort, leave it on um, if you're going to be using 144Hz or things will look washed out and weird. And there's an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. Now running the monitor in HDR, just so I can show you the options which are available. You can see now it says HDR on. So you can still activate the blue light filter, but you have to be aware again, as I was mentioning, HDR does sort of very specifically control colour temperature and um, luminance and all sorts of different things so that would upset uh, the sort of accurate representation of HDR. Really in SDR it does the same, it uh, affects the accurate representation of colours and it's just if you want a more relaxing look to the image and that's fine. Colour, you, you can't control the brightness anymore because HDR is very specific about that. Reference white plate, explore that in the review. Um, it's actually set to 80 by default, but I find lowering it to 52 more accurate. You can change the contrast, but don't do this. Um, there's no reason to in HDR and I'll just upset the image again. Color temperature, don't make extreme adjustments again because you'll just upset what HDR is doing, but certainly you can make some setting changes. And if you've made slight changes for your SDR um, usage of the monitor, I wouldn't really worry about just keeping them used uh, rather than resetting everything to normal because it's going to make a slight difference, you're not really going to notice too much. You can't change the gamma setting, again that's all controlled for HDR for you. Image, you can't activate the dark boost because that would again upset the gamma, but you can uh, change various other things. You can't disable the variable backlight under HDR because really that's one of the main features for HDR, but just leave it set to fast because I don't see any disadvantage to doing that. And everything else is enabled, I believe, um, except for the auto SDR brightness and display SDR input. So, of course, the gamut is mapped accurately for the DCI-P3 color space with HDR and auto SDR brightness. Um, again, HDR is very specific about its brightness control and it's not going to start sort of saying, oh, you're in a dim room, so I'm not going to be as bright. That's not how it works. I'm now going to look at the lighting features. First off, there's light in motion, and this controls, well, two things. Um, I'm just going to turn off the light signal so you don't get confused when I'm talking about this. The light in motion feature has a little projector, down firing projector, and it projects a logo onto your desk. You can customize this as a, a sort of lens kit um, and you can change the, you can use a stencil if you want or if you're creative you can do something else and uh, you can change how the pattern looks. But this is the sort of the ROG logo. And you can change how bright that is, there are different levels. So this is level three, the brightest, level two, a bit dimmer, level one, dimmer again, or level zero, which is off. Another feature which this controls, and some people don't realise that it's actually the light in motion control that does this, but there's actually a little logo at the top, um, sort of a little swift motif, rog swift motif, and you can set that again to various different brightness levels. It won't really show properly on the camera, and the colour won't show properly on the camera. It's quite a deep red, where it'll probably look a bit orangey on the camera. 
Um, I don't have a lot to say about this feature. I don't really... I find it a bit gimmicky to be honest. I don't really care much for it, uh, but you can use it if you want to. Note that on the OSD it is referred to as light in motion, but in literature and some things you'll read online it's actually called ROG light signature. So that's another thing that it can be called. ROG light signal, I'm just going to turn this off now, and ROG light signal I actually quite like and I don't know why I like it, it's just, I thought it was a bit gimmicky when I heard about it, but there's a little projector um, and it projects a ROG motif onto your wall behind the monitor. And I've got a boring plain white wall and I think I like this because it just makes it a bit more interesting. So there's a little projector at the top, so this is separate from the um, light and motion feature. But there's a little scroll wheel at the back and you can actually scroll that up or down to change the position and size of the logo. So really it depends how close you've got the monitor to the wall or if you want to sort of just change where it appears on the wall. You can have it smaller and lower down or larger and higher up. Um, you can almost project it onto the ceiling there. Pretty weird. So yeah, I kind of like this feature. Um, so I tend to leave it on, at least when the room's a bit darker. Or a sink. That allows you to use software to control the Aura RGB feature of the monitor. Um, Aura Sync is something which various ASUS peripherals also support, so you can synchronize all of your lighting, your RGB lighting, um, with the monitor and various other peripherals using software. Aura RGB is just how you control this feature on the monitor itself through the OSD. I don't think I'm going to be going through all of these, but there's Rainbow. So I'm just going to turn this off so um, it might make this feature stand out a little bit more. But you can see I've got it on now, but you can't actually see anything from the front of the monitor because it's not particularly bright. It doesn't really project a sort of aura around the uh, monitor. I would have actually preferred it if it did. But it's like a sort of another ASUS logo at the rear there. And that's the rainbow setting. So it cycles through various different colours. I'm not going to show you all of these. You can set it to a colour cycle, which is uh, rather than sort of gradually shifting different bits of it through the sort of rainbow, it shifts a bit more rapidly through various different colours. And you can alternatively set it to a static colour of red, green, blue, cyan, magenta or yellow. There's a breathing effect, which again you can control with various different colours, so I've got it set to green at the moment and it just sort of pulses on and off at a fairly gradual pace. Or the strobing, which does the same but um, is more rapid. So again you can kind of see a little bit of light on the wall behind but it's not really yeah, you can't really see it from the front. It doesn't really do an awful lot. So I don't like this as much as LG's sphere lighting system, which I actually quite enjoyed on the LG 32 GK 850G, for example. That's all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ASUS PG27UQ. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.